Hello everybody, this is Emma Void, back once again with another episode of my Heaven Will Be Mine Let's Play. Last we left off, we'd finished the game! Or at least, you know, one of the playthroughs. But there's at least two more endings. Possibly more than that, even. And, uh, I really want to see what they are. So, let's get back to it, shall we? This time around... Let's play as Lunaterra. From the Division of Existential Safety, Conflict Enabled Ship Self Archetype Model, First Flight, July 16th, 1969, Place of Manufacture, Sea of Crises, Earth's Moon, Our Hope for a Throne of the Soul. For the Memorial Foundation International Space Program and all humanity. Until no one is forgotten and all are remembered. Registering pilot. Welcome, pilot first class Lunaterra. Error, multiple maintenance issues and critical errors detected. Notice, launch permissions are locked until addressed. List errors. Uh, possible sensor failure, several limb connections are not registering, no weapons are loaded, critical errors, mass alert 1, healing failure on critical area near core, possible bleed, mass alert 2, tidal core is resonating at levels harmful to the pilot, ready manual firmware update, upgrades detected, accepted manual internal Mechanism firmware update, switched ammunition conceptual mode, custom sensors loaded, dynamic limb optimization loaded, 1981.1.7 weapon loadout drivers loaded. Oof. They really go all in on all of these uh, technical bits, don't they? Mass alert 1. I bleed 2. Recording derived from the data burned four dimensionally into the wounds. Suffered by this unit almost one year ago. Wound self-generated by forced overloading tearing the core open during sustained conflict in the Mars Ares regression campaign. All critical systems have naturally healed, yet the wound continues to bleed into space. Fuel efficiency lowered, healing speed reduced, tidal reactor speed cannot be regulated, leading to possibility of overload and increased pilot strain. It is strongly recommended to seek the assistance of a full maintenance team. A lack of understanding of the full effects of gravitational conflict on the human gestalt means that this computer cannot provide adequate instruction on therapeutic measures. <laughs> permanently delay permanently disable that alert. Really ignore? Yeah. Provide reason. <laughs> I can handle it. Automatic scan alerts show that this may not be a very good reason. <laughs> Would you like to provide another? No. Mass alert 1 disabled. Details mass alert 2. Tidal reactor has had unauthorized modification that is causing an unsustainable chain reaction. This chip is not equipped to handle prolonged operation at this capacity. Increasing short term output may cause long term failures. Loss of gravitational stability may cause fracturing and instability in pilot. <laughs> Permanently dis disable that one too. Cannot be disabled by pilot authorization. Okay. Ooh, key code. Alert disabled. For record keeping purposes, please input the reason. I'm fine. Ship self Mercurium is in spacefaring condition. You are cleared to launch. Disable Launcher OS and engage Catapult. All controls given to Pilot. There's a message for you. Cancel. Refused. This message will be automatically played. Letting you keep this is my gift to you, Lunaterra. Your favorite and loosest leash. Prove to me you've learned not to choke on it. Oh. Europa, huh? Standing orders updated. Mm, if it's that urgent, it's too late. If it's not too late, you can wait. Let me enjoy the view of the rings. 
They are beautiful. Even though there's only so long you can watch them before even the sight of the six planets' rings become as boring as a blue sky, Maricrisium sens sensors render them in every detail, using every sense as perfectly as she always has. <laughs> you really are getting old, aren't you? Both me and you. I should probably listen to Control and throw you out and get a new one. But that doesn't seem right. You're only supposed to get one body. Even if I haven't been very good to you, I could never throw you out. We're all we've got. Mare Christium is the test type model. It was made as a proof of concept. It isn't the first vessel made to grant humans locomotion and life in space, but it is the first to allow for outward expression. In all kinds of ways. It can do so many things, and they gave it devices for everything, because they hadn't estimated how powerful tidal engines would become, or what sorts of things humans would really want to do in space. It's the first machine meant for conflict, but it's also the last machine that was meant for other things, too. A ceremonial tin soldier, made to impress. An impossible to use machine. Mind machine or biofeedback interfacing is necessary to give humans control over a second body, but the Mare Christian is done completely manually. Oh wow. It makes Luna Terra sort of a genius, and sort of an idiot, that she can't do things any other way. <laughs> I'm having so much fun. It's hard to believe it's going to be over so soon. No. I love it when old things are over. And new things begin. Open the channel. Let's hear those standing orders. Alright. January 1st, 1980, and the long and cold war where humanity united against its nemesis, an existential threat from beyond the stars, has been over for a long time. Since the 50s, we've been fighting a war against an existential threat that we cannot understand, cannot perceive, and is powerless against the technology of Earth. That's a pretty stupid sort of war to fight, isn't it? When there's enough of a mess down here to worry about. Humanity is already the undisputed authority on, of, of reality, and we have the physics to prove it. It's time to return to Earth, our home, the seat of the universe. Before Earth takes us back in pieces, let's go home with grace. On the first anniversary of the decommissioning of the International Space Program, we, Memorial Foundation Native Sphere Existential Safety, in agreement with our home planet's unanimous decision, declare there is no future for humanity in space. Let's come home. I remember that one. It's been one year since we declared independence. Ah, oh, yeah. That's Cradle's Graces. We know that one, too. And then Celestial Mechanics. Or Screw Being Human! I liked that one. That one was really good. <laughs> Alright. Day one. First off, my own alerts. Just come and get me. Combat communications packet. Oh, you think you're so cool, don't you? Well, watch your back, because I'm coming for you. Think that number one position is going to last? Not a chance. In fact, why don't we have a little duel about it, if you're not too scared? Come meet me in the shadow of Olympia Mons, and I'll make sure that this time you're the one left splattered and helpless and pinned on the side of a mountain, and not me, like the last nine times. <laughs> last nine times, wow. And would it kill you to, like, stick around for a bit after, you smug jerk? Not that I'm planning on losing. This time I'm going to beat you. Yeah, alright. Cold War Ace Reports. First Generation Pilot Research Declassification. Memorial Foundation Existential Safety. She was unremarkable. I did not remember her at first. We took any of those who wanted badly to live in space and did not fit on Earth. In retrospect, we were asking for a rather unique quality, and it is not just a coincidence that she was there. The pilots had to be young adults, passive physical, and not care what space might do to their body. It is not so surprising that someone like her would emerge from that pool of people, but the woman you know today has been iterated on since she was an adolescent. Be assured, I saw nothing of promise in her when I first met her. I told her that myself, as I told all the students. 
I am uninterested in your potential. We are judged by the self we create. I find that encourages brats to not take their specialness so seriously. That was not Luna Terra's problem. Piece by piece, she created someone very interesting to be. We gave those children permission, permission and Luna Terra was simply unique in her execution. She was never encouraged. She was never punished. You will never find another prodigy like Luna Terra by looking for tidally sensitive children, because they do not exist. We will not find them pre-made. They must create themselves. Was this not the dream of the Memorial Foundation space program? And justification for return. Earth is not the sphere of our home planet. It is not the physical body, which is called Terra, the home of life. It is not measured in mass or by its gravity, its position in the universe. Earth is us. We measure Earth by culture. We are the Earth, humanity the particles of its mass, and by our gravity its body is formed. By our diversity and multiplicity, Earth exists. The living miracle of humanity's shared power, insignificant unless we are joined. This international space program, with representatives all across the Earth, represents our commitment to peace, and that humanity will never seek again to destroy itself. That humanity has the right to eternal life, invincible bodies, and unrestricted movement in space, as humanity expands beyond this sphere, as extensions of the universal human rights of life, culture, and freedom. To protect the growth and sanctity of all culture, ensure a future for humanity, and defeat of our enemy. On this day, we inaugurate the International Memorial Foundation Space Program. Alright, so that's a pretty old message, and I get the feeling these other ones possibly are too. Who wrote that one? Hmm. Alright, so once again, got our alignment chart. All normal. Comms, Europa, Director of Combat Operations, Memorial Foundation, Existential Safety, <laughs> not your mom. <laughs> Uh, pilot first class, don't send me messages. So you really have betrayed us, haven't you? I've never betrayed anyone in my entire life. <laughs> huh, huh. But seriously, whose side are you on right now? Ah, it sounds so accusatory to put it like that. You know, I'm fine with you being on whoever's side you choose. So I can destroy them and drive you back to me. <laughs> Holy shit, Europa. <laughs> that may end up being a lot of people. What? You think I, you don't think I'm up for it? Don't worry yourself about that part, kitten. <laughs> if you want me to defect back, you could always just ask. Oh, sweet girl, I'm not interested in you coming back so you can walk away again. <laughs> How many times did Halamede fall for that? Shouldn't count as tricking her if she knew it was coming every time. Oh, stop it. I hate it when you're modest. It's so beneath you. Give her at least the dignity of a subtle seduction. <laughs> I would've. That's not what she wanted. She really ought to think about her reputation more. And what more is there to say about the trail of messes you leave? But my disappointment in you both is total. My adorable failures, what am I to do with you? You should go easy on her. I live to spoil her. Make no mistake that everything she deserves will be visited on you. I wouldn't dream of not letting you have that. You have to know by now how aware I am of what you want and deserve. <laughs> You're so good to me, Europa. I don't deserve it. When I double-cross you again, be sure to really let me have it. I hope you do. But I take no chances with loyalty. Halamede merely hopes you will change. I think it's charming that even you believe that might have some effect on you, but I know much better than you, kitten. I won't let you return no matter how much you beg until you have no other choice. When you can't pivot or run or trick your way through, when you can't second guess or lie, that's the only way to change that nature of yours. Oof. Ouch. Okay. That was an entire thing. 
Let's see. Retrograde and retrograde. Chasing after the string of pearls, Lunaterra and Pluto find each other instead. It's been almost a year since they last saw each other, and Lunaterra has never seen Pluto like this. Are you ready to spin backwards? Hmm. Weaving out of the six planets' rings, Memorial Foundation's ace, Lunaterra plays cat and mouse with the renegade ship thief Saturn. Aha! You know, we've seen that one. From the other position. I'm guessing parts of it are going to be the same. Objective in sight, opening channel to base. Captain, I'm bored. <laughs> Captain, this sucks. Well, you heard them, Europa. Tell these, tell those idiots to be careful what they wish for, because the mission parameters have changed. As you know, Celestial Mechanics has been operating a clandestine ship self-development lab with an experimental prototype in violation of the terms of the Menor Memorial Foundation Space Program Decommission Treaty. And we are on a top secret surprise attack to take out the last operational shipyard and make sure we never have to find out what Celestial Mechanics has been planning to do with it. Couldn't be more obvious what happened, but go ahead and brief me anyway. <sighs> no points for guessing. The prototype already launched, rendering most of the base inoperable. We lost contact almost instantly. Find it before it leaves Cronus's gravitational field. Oh, great. What a pain! <laughs> Weren't you just bored? There's no way to find it. It's as good as gone. There is a chance that the ship's self is still nearby, so get to work. Ugh. Yeah, this is... Bravo, evade now. Uh, now. I've got nothing, Cap. Oof. Bubblegum pink electricity sparks off the ice and dust of the inner ring like a lightning bolt and through his ship self. He doesn't get even the slightest chance. Captain Mayday! <laughs> don't listen, you don't have any right to complain, right, Europa? What a callous attitude you have. Who did you learn that from? The best. Preparing to engage. Uh, I wish Europa would stop sending me boys who can't control themselves. Having fun dismantling my escorts. With a string of Pearl's fingers, Saturn carefully peels the mechanical musculature out of the poor ship's arm she's holding. A souvenir of the last of Luna's hair's escorts that she sent crying too easily back to their base. Hey, I know this bit. Maybe it does has a, have a mouth. Maybe it does. Uh, though I suppose Europa's learned her lesson about sending me girls who can't control themselves. <laughs> oh, really? Hey, that's really interesting. Mind telling me more? Oh, she's a hacker, too. <laughs> that she is. Alright, let's skip ahead a little, shall we? All right. Now then. This time around. Was that the betray option last time? Huh. Interesting. It's more fun if they do when Saturn gets embarrassed. How was that? Did it hurt? It's just weird. It's weirder that it doesn't hurt. It's easier for Luna Terra to cut through the malleable flesh of the string of pearls directly than untangle her from the wrapper. The flesh reforms quickly, so she has to work patiently. The string of pearls might be impossible to destroy. Even if Saturn can't land a hit, Luna Terra feels like somehow she's the one who got lucky. <laughs> If just this hurt, if just this hurt, you'd never be able to fight. Your brain is giving you more nuanced information. You're very sensitive. Lucky. You'll get used to it. If you are serious about next time, think of yourself as something a little bigger. Hmm, I like that. Being big. 
I'm glad I trusted you. <laughs> Stop shaking then, or ask me to go easier. Just a little easier. <laughs> of course. Do you remember me yet? I thought you'd remember the name of at least some of the girls you've made out with in supply closets. <laughs> Your face! Just kidding. But sorry, it was worth it. You weren't kidding about still being dangerous. Every pilot knows you. By both of your reputations. You're definitely Saturn, because no one hated me as much as you. So now I'm curious why you don't anymore. If I tell you, you'll owe me extra. So save it for the next time you catch me. <laughs> well, I'll just have to catch you again quick. All free. Now get out before someone catches us. Alright. Excited to be out in, uh, out in the field again, doing important work. <laughs> We're a long way from anything important out here. I can't help but notice. You think Command wants you as far away from them as they can get you? What makes you think that? That you said it, that Command is my ex, and that I did once double-cross Memorial Foundation. In that case, you should be happy you're in the field at all, and not in a brig or in the process of being shipped back to Earth. Well, I am. I am so thankful. I don't need to be lied to about my work being important. Oh, I would never lie about a thing like that. In fact, the most lovely sixth planet of our solar system, Cronus, has become extremely busy in the last 24 hours. A major leak out of Celestial Mechanics has revealed they're finishing a prototype here, and Cradle's Graces knows about it too. Apparently, the Hellion responsible for the leak has stolen it too. You're just the woman for the job. Reigning in incorrigible pilots is your specialty. Let's see if that power can be used for good for once. Europa, please leave some of me left to fight the enemy. Don't shoot me down before the mission starts. Was I too mean? I'd prefer direct combat any day. Well, let me tell you something nice, then. That Cradle's Grace's super weapon, your favorite, has been spotted in the, in the system. My favorite? What do you mean? Don't play dumb. You make that same face whenever Kroon Makula is spotted. It's the biggest mystery of their side, and one of the only reasons Cradle's Graces hasn't collapsed by now. The Kroon Makula's... Hold up. Someone pointed out how to pronounce that. Am I pronouncing it right this time? Makula. 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 I think Makula. Maybe. I don't know. Anywho. The Kroon Makula's power is unreal. It's far stronger in reality than anything that could possibly have been projected from its original schematics. Its capabilities seem endless and impossible to predict or counter. And no one knows who the pilot is. The list of people who could pilot something like that is very short, however. Maybe it's someone you know. Worried I might double-cross you again? I'm not with Cradle's Graces anymore for a reason. Oh, I just never trust you when girls are involved. Alright, well then. First generation pilot candidate interviews. Why do you want to go to space? I want a new start. In what sense? To get rid of this weight. We are required to make it clear that the purpose of the program is not to leave Earth, but to expand it. The weight will follow you. But will it weigh differently? Please explain about what you mean about what you said previously. About what? What do you mean when you say you don't want to be me? Uh, I don't know how else to say it. Isn't it obvious? Who would want to be this? I don't understand what you see that is wrong with you. I do. Aha. Uh -huh. You're saying that you, as you are, the person who you are, doesn't want to be you. Yes. Then don't be- then you aren't that person. But that person weighs on me. So you would like to have the weight of being this other person that you are not? You would like that removed? Yes, please. That may be possible. Hmm. Interesting. 
Pilot program progress. Oh, hey, Europa. The Cold War is looking bleak. The threat from space is more flimsy, translucent, and inscrutable when once it was so strong that all of humanity feared it. Existential threats on Earth are more pernicious than ever, and the scouts are not keeping up. It has become difficult to argue against the possibility that the scouting program has done more harm than good, and that goes just as much, if not more so, for the pilot program. Historically, death has always invited the enemy here in its greatest strength. Humans can't resist killing each other long enough to protect themselves against the protect themselves from the existential threat. It's easy to make this argument, but we have had little success with it. No matter how celebrated the slogan is, and no matter how many governments and leaders profess to live by it, the simple fact remains. The existential threat can never be as powerful as we are. Humans will always pose a greater threat to other humans than the existential threat will. It will always be easier for humanity to eliminate the threat by killing their own than by fighting the threat directly. While we have offer offered children and the unwanted to fight the existential threat with existential intent, humanity has turned its gaze inward, rather than to the heavens. Not even strong enough to pierce the atmosphere without burning, the existential threat can no longer be labeled as such. For these, re for these reasons, we accept the decision to decommission the Memorial Foundation space program. Huh. All right. Now we've got something completely new. Let's go meet up with Pluto. <laughs> what's going on? You've been pestering me with orders, so what's the sudden holdup? Central said to launch immediately. We have to get to the Celestial Mechanics Lab regardless of whether or not the prototype is already gone. There's valuable information there, but it's worthless if Cradle's Graces gets there first. Have some patience, Luna Terra. The Cradle's Graces carrier just launched a completely unknown ship self. This can't be right. A person can't pilot a ship that big. Tidal resonance would tear the pilot apart. Is this... impossible? I hope. I've never seen anything like it. No, you can't fight it, Luna Terra, so don't even think about it. Any better ideas? You must be headed for the prototype launched, right? Where else? Because they have to know that it's that it already escaped. Don't underestimate your opponent, Luna Terra. Scavenging the lab may be useful anyway. We should have gone there for information, if nothing else. Even against an unknown and objectively stronger enemy, what makes you so sure, Luna Terra? Uh, no particular reason. Or a single particular reason. <laughs> Still don't trust me. Don't insult your former instructor, Luna Terra. I knew how much to trust you before you betrayed us to Cradle's Graces. My opinion hasn't changed because we welcomed you back into the fold. My best pilot and worst student, you've never been predictable except in your consistency for trouble. But it's a reliable metric. You're right. You know me. So if you're so worried, don't have to, you don't have to let me have free reign like this. Since you were a kid, from your earliest academy days, you've never been able to look in my eyes and lie. You only got away with anything by keeping your mouth shut. Very unlike Pluto, the hope of Cradle's graces, she could lie right to my face with a smile if she thought it was for the best. Pluto exceeded the wildest expectations of the pilot program, so much so that it was decommissioned in part because of her. If Celestial Mechanics have successfully built a monster that can withstand her, this engagement will end in disaster. And that is much more terrifying than this machine you're so eager to fight. That concerns me far more than you betraying us, or fighting a battle you can't possibly win. I don't think any of you really understood what you're doing. Pluto's unreal. She's far more overwhelming than any of you understood. If that ship is unworthy of Pluto, it's going to be torn apart under the pressure of her, not the other way around. Pluto's the only real human being. No wonder if she feels so alien when she looks at us. You want me to let you take an impossibly dangerous mission because you think you can save our enemy? <laughs> what can I say to that? Maybe she can teach you the lesson I can't. Like waking up underwater to the wet burn of your lungs' desperation for air. Like floating untethered in space, unable to move under your own power. 
Losing the security of gravity is like being naked in space. Hmm. This is a bit similar to, um... To Saturn's first encounter with Pluto. Interesting. Gravity is necessary for human life in space. Gravity is necessary for unrestricted movements in space. Can't have one without the other. The force that binds your existence together, the force to shape foreign bodies, pure agency. Gravity is necessary not just to live in space, but to be human in space. But being human is a little harder for Pluto, so she has to work for it. The tidal forces of her spacefaring body, the Kroon Makula, are as strong as she believes and as weak as she feels. And Luna Terra needs to make sure all the calculations are in order. Everything in her ship permeates man operates manually. She's just been at it long enough that it feels like a second skin. The jolt of nostalgia interrupts Luna Terra's mental math. She forgets to carry the one. It interrupts Pluto's focus, and she has a moment where she's not invisible. Close enough to touch the surface of the moon lab, Luna Terra is seen and known by Pluto, and they are suddenly falling down the well of too late and nothing you can do. <laughs> I knew it. Ooh, warning, gravitational interference. It's important to get a grip. Knowing that there's nothing you can do is, is something Pluto considers freeing, and Luna Terra considers exciting. Feeling doomed is clear permission to do whatever. As soon as Mary Christine is through the cloud cover, she fires solid light into the remains of the Celestial Mechanics lab and chases it through the wound. The lab was recently damaged by the illegal launch of a hijacked ship, but that damage is barely noticeable compared to the massive hole left by a much, much larger ship crashing through. Luna Terra acts fast under, under pressure. If there's no point in hiding, there's no point in stopping. It's true. Luna Terra is living on the whim of Kroon Makula. Kroon Makula. Kroon Ma Every time I'm, I'm going to be... I'm probably getting it wrong again, but I'm going to try to just stick with what I think might be the right one. Which can probably do whatever to her at any time. If she can't run away, she wants to make the first move. It's the sort of thing that makes a lot of sense if you think about it, and no sense at all if you think a little more. But that's Luna Terra, isn't it? She's betting you'll think too much, or not enough. Against Pluto, is that really such a good idea? She's someone who always thinks just enough. Which makes it easy for Luna Terra to slip through, deep into the lab, until it gets quiet, except for the sounds of the moon quaking and trembling. After almost a year, the dread and the thrill is way too much to slow down and start talking. That's what the arrow flying into Pluto's gravity well is saying. Who will make the first move? When Luna Terra punctures the last armor layer and opens up the terminal cavern, light spills out and screaming sound because the Kroon Makula is peeling the lab and most of the moon inside out with the forces of its own times. It's not something that's impossible or anything, it's just something that's only possible in theory, which is still terrifying. More terrifying. And more terrifying than that power is Pluto's finesse. And more terrifying than the finesse is her gentleness, spooling matter like threads in the tiny galaxy of which she is the sun. Her power is very kind, but it's also a little perverse. What meaning does mercy have from something that can core out a moon? Kryn Makula's developers compared it to a black hole. They wanted a machine so powerful and absolute even light couldn't escape it. Luna Terra understands now that was wrong. She's a star, gushing and twinkling with matter and light. Who wouldn't be swept up in that? The Maricristian is so small. Pluto has never seen it from a perspective like Kryn Makula's before. She never imagined it would look so fragile from here like a toy version of the fierce fighter she remembered. Pluto's sense of scale is true. Luna Terra feels just like a plastic toy, too. Come on, say something. It's making me sad. <laughs> it really does fit you. So much more than I ever thought. Is it hard to look away? Being able to render you speechless is the power I've always dreamed of. What do you think? I know just the look won't change your mind, but I want you to tell me. Tell you what? That I regret betraying you? 
I told you then that I always would. No, no. I won't let you do that, Lunati. Did you think I'd be mad? I mean, of course I'm mad at you, but not for anything you did to me. I wouldn't ever be mad at you for not having enough faith in me to see through Cradle's Grace's dream of a new home for humans in space. I'm just mad at you for not having enough faith in yourself to see it through. And leaving all the work to me. Oops, I guess that is why I'm a little upset with you. Not mad, you know. <laughs> just disappointed. I can't believe I'm still the one scolding you like a kid. I'm trying to be the grown-up, you know. I did the responsible thing. I took the realistic option. I'm here to play the part of the boring adult, the grown-up villain. Oh, that's right. I remembered why I actually am mad at you. Better not go down quietly. You better really believe what you just said. I'll forgive you if you left us for something stupid, but I'll never forgive you if you left us for something you don't believe in. And you better not believe in it, because I also won't forgive you for fighting for a future that cruel. <laughs> that doesn't leave me a lot of options. I don't think I can fight against that. Don't you dare. I won't forgive that either. Were you hoping, maybe, that it wouldn't be like this? That I wouldn't have to fight? They'll change you. In ways you don't understand. I've seen you fight so many times. I saw when you got that scar and your poor ship got her wounds. Has anyone else seen that side of you as much as me? I don't think so. Not even Europa. But it's different when you're on the other side. You think I don't really know you because I've never stared down the barrel of your rifle or felt that knife nick my ship? It's a different kind of knowing. Teach me then. Or I'll teach you. <laughs> Pluto learns a lesson. Lunatera gets schooled. What's it gonna be, Lunati? Oh, right. You never want to make the first move. And I can go. Pluto sweeps up the swirling, tumbling matter in the hollowed-out moon. Making the second move has always worked for Lunaterra. She's never been good at setting the pace, only outsmarting it. So, it's the only move to make. Even still, maybe there aren't any winning moves. Lunaterra has to be ready for that possibility. Macron Makula is a very impossible sort of machine, almost as impossible as Pluto. Krun Makula can grind space-time to a crawl with its tidal forces, can pull ambient matter into a whirl with enough friction for the combustion to give birth to a star. Emotionally, and almost as much physically. A tiny sun is born, but Lunaterra has just gotten out of the way. Lunaterra isn't where Pluto is expecting, and then there's suddenly a hail of bullets in her skull. Pluto doesn't mind the onslaught, but it's still shocking, but not in an unpleasant way. It's actually very joyful. Really? Really? You're not just trying to scare me? For real, not a joke. We're finally going to have a fight about it. Is this body so me that you finally aren't going to be weird about fighting it? Lunaterra thinks Pluto could use a lesson in how terrifying actual combat can be, but is there anyone terrifying enough to teach it to her? Are you trying to hide from me? I've been waiting for a real fight. I'm tired of you telling me what you think I'm right. If you really thought that, you'd be here on my side. So prove I'm wrong already. Or admit defeat. Bullets through her arm and chest and pretty much everywhere, but that is not a problem. Tear the bullets, even if they're light, redirect them with gravity, pull them into a cosmic whirl. They will never even reach her. They will be always approaching, never meeting. They will be an infinite whirl. And that world will become a star, washing the Merichrysium in heat and light and radiation. Ah, that's more like it. <laughs> Not fast enough, Pluto. And then she runs Pluto through. It's not enough, but it hurts. It's serious. 
The brittle spear is of a cold and rational metal that repels cosmic concepts. <laughs> Thank God. I was beginning to worry you didn't care about anything anymore. So here. The star supernovas. Krinmakula holds the star, and Krinmakula is the star. Lunaterra almost doesn't get out of it. Her engines overheat, the electromagnetic current shorts her sensors, and her chassis is fried. But she can move more than Pluto can, at least for long enough to get away. <laughs> but I'm still ahead of you. Now I know why everyone hates you so much. You're no fun to fight with at all. <laughs> Are you kidding? Like you fight fair. Now that I know you're what you're really like, I'm not going to accept anything less. I don't want to do that again. Well, too bad. Whose fault is that? Yeah. I know. Oof. Ever since the day Mars began, Mars has been doomed. No, there will never be a planet Mars. That's a name reserved for places where human life, gravity, and culture reign. Ah. We've read this one before. Who do you think we're doing this for? <laughs> Why don't I go home too and leave all those idiots to fucking die on a rock? It's not like we're idiots. We know we're doomed. We'll finally have something alien in space. Alright, I remember those ones. Those are good. Receiving report. <laughs> Alert. Report not accepted. Two errors detected. Failure to explain why Celestial Mechanics ship self string of pearls was not successfully apprehended. Failure to explain why Cradle's Grace's ship self croon Makula was not successfully incapacitated. Please correct errors before proceeding. Resubmit. No corrections submitted. Force resubmit. Generating new assignments. Penalty assignment. Sniper duty. Planet Ares. Currently held by Cradle's Graces. Purpose. Preventing celestial mechanics refueling and egress. Penalty assignment. Sniper duty. Cradle's Graces held Planet Ares. Hmm. Top secret. Take out Cradle's Graces prototype Kroon Makula on research assignment in Cradle's Graces territory. Penalty assignments cannot be refused. Indicate you have understood new orders. Alright. Well, I think that's enough for today's episode. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. Be sure to come back next time. We'll continue on this route and see where it takes us. If you enjoyed, please like, subscribe, all the other usual YouTube garbage, and I'll see you next time. Bye, everybody!